test one two test one two okay we are live people so ladies and gentlemen welcome to another twitter space call investing with friends today we are talking about a specific collection called ducks now so today with us we will have moon bubbles that we are joining from ducks now profile on twitter and from our side is travis say hello to travis and miro that will be co-hosting this special Twitter call event. So, guys, how are you feeling today, folks? Travis, Miro, all good? How are you doing? How's everyone? All good here, good. friend. Good. Excited to see a, a, a good amount of people coming in and we're just getting started. Yeah, I mean, this is like our third space call and we already have a decent amount of people. So, I am pretty excited to start this space call, especially since we are having ducks now one of my favorite NFT collections out there. Gentlemen, <clears throat> pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me join you guys today. Pleasure, uh, pleasure is all mine. Travis, my man, how are you? Doing well, my friend, doing well. Yeah, just over here on the West Coast in Canada. We've, uh, things are a little smoky. We're surrounded by forest fires right now, but uh, we're hoping to get oh. some rain pretty soon. But um, yeah, no, nothing, nothing to panic about. Everybody's safe. And uh, just, you know, hitting the grind and, and moving forward and, and loving things. So all is good, my friend. Well, yeah, I mean, all is good here also. And uh, let's chat a bit uh, today. So uh, let's say I stumble upon some news about uh, currency wars. So what do you think about it? Uh, dollar is getting strength in front of everything else. So have you seen the news? Yeah, um, personally, uh, I'll just be honest, like, I, I don't know how to be smart anymore when it comes to these things. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like one fiat goes up, another one goes down, and so on. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an unprecedented time we're living in, but, uh, but, but there's always, like, uh, something to come on the other end. Um, it's just a matter of, yeah figuring out how to move in these turbulent uh, waters but uh, i think we're we're all we're all informed enough um, obviously having right information is key so um, we'll, we'll just follow and see how things go but uh, de definitely like tough to to predict and 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 make decisions you know on, on how to move yeah definitely i mean this is like very weird time for me, I, I don't know how do you guys feel, but a lot of things going on. We have COVID, we have uh, um, this currency war, we have a uh, war in Europe, and everything is kind of happening at the same, same time. And uh, it feels completely different to live in this, this kind of uh, environment. I don't know. What is your feeling about this? I definitely feel that things are very uncertain and they, I don't think as, as long as I've been around, they haven't been this certain in a very long time. Even just looking at kind of the, on the macro scale, just the general market, things are literally hanging on by a thread and uh, the, there's a huge bearish sentiment and a, a lot of fear going around the market. And uh, it's, uh, it's definitely pretty wild to see how closely connected that is with the whole DeFi and uh, crypto and NFT world. Um, it's definitely fear is contagious here. But um, the other thing on the other side of the coin is during these times, it's pretty amazing to see these really strong projects really just find their way and continue to develop and keep the hype going and succeed even throughout all of this uncertainty and, and fear that's happening. So uh, as, as uncertain and as as worrisome as things are, you know, there's a lot of inspiration to be drawn as well. And uh, that's definitely one thing I'm trying to focus on and, and take away. Yeah, honestly, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, Maybe like on, on a positive note, it, it makes you really value other things like the small things. Right. But when it, when it comes to actual like um, building and uh, growth on ecosystem projects and so on, uh, yeah, some, something I've actually been chatting with colleagues about that unique is the fact that, you know, uh, 
<clears throat> this like bear market does bring tough times for many people, you know, don't, don't want to undermine that by any means. You know, we've, we've all felt it. We've all been burnt. Right. But on the other side, uh, it allows us to focus and not just us, but like exactly what Travis uh, talked about, like these, these like projects that are really trying to, you know, build something for the long term. It really allows us to, to focus um, on actual building with, without any, noise on the side that 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 we would otherwise see like in a in a crazy bull market right so um yeah look trying trying to to see the positive in all of it i think is key yeah definitely i mean staying positive is definitely one of the key things in these tough times and uh, you know it's a fight or flight you know it's always been that and if you look back at the history events this is like nothing new. I mean, it's different events for sure, but uh, things are happening before in this kind of manner. So, yeah, at least we can learn from the history and try to adapt. You know, it's all about, about adapting and uh, trying to figure it out how to swim in this kind of uh, tough waters. I don't know. It, it's, as I said, it's, it's pretty strange to live in this kind of uh, environment. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, staying positive is definitely one of the things we can do and learn from the, the history. So, yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. Like, like uh, yeah, another thing be before we actually uh, introduce ducks, the, the, the one thing I imagine is maybe good and, and we'll hear more about it um, in the space is when, when it comes to community building, which is um, something ducks is doing, right? I imagine these maybe like kind of tough tougher market conditions does allow for um more genuine community growth right like if 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 i guess you're seeing like a very busy uh, market being pumped right you, you you might not necessarily have a feel for you know who in your community is 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 genuinely interested in like which elements of the community and who's there looking to just make a quick flip right paper hands um so i imagine that when it comes to community building and we'll, we'll hear more about that um that maybe there could be some positives here as well to to build a strong core um that that really believes in something well projects uh, that are building right now i mean it's tough in these times but um uh, it's definitely a good time for building stuff uh, especially when all the, those uh, noises are gone and we can focus on building things uh, that, I mean, that's the way we are doing in Unique. And I see a lot of projects are also building stuff, which is, I mean, really great. Absolutely. And, you know, being involved in community growth and all of that, it's, uh, it's nice to have m those more genuine conversations with people who are actually interested in what's being developed and what's being worked on. It's... Uh, definitely creates an environment where growth and development can be focused on and there's that genuine um, interest there and uh, an input that people want to you know contribute and be part of something still um, and not it's not all just about flipping nfts and you know it's it's so easy in in a book in a bull market to, to you know make that extra money um, it's, it's nice when you actually have to put a little bit more work into it, a little more effort. And like you said, Miros, it really weeds out the paper hands and, uh, it, uh, contributes to that organic growth, which is so important for a community. And if you can, if you can thrive and, and learn in the tough times, can you imagine how, like, imagine the power that you'll have when things do finally turn around and they will, because that's just the cycle of, of, you know, of things of life and uh it's it's going to be pretty interesting to see when things turn around what kind of comes out at the end of all of this for sure man for sure uh well uh friends uh thank you so much uh so i think we can get started with this uh special interview so today our our guest is uh, moon bubbles that is joining us from Doug's DAO profile uh, Moon Bubbles, how are you, friend? Uh, nice to have you here. Good morning. Pleasure to meet you all. Quack, quack. quack. Let's all go. Ours. Quack, quack, <laughs> indeed. We also have yeah, Kevin, yeah. who is listener, if you want to pull him up later on or even now. 
Uh, yeah, I sent him invite. Maybe something has bug, but let me do one more time. Okay, invite sent. So, uh, how are your friends? How are things there? At the Quack doing... world? <laughs> oh, everything is doing is quite well in the Quack world. I got my Dijin duck who got minted overnight. And Kenny was so nice to give it to me for free. I had a 10 Solana bounty on it. And hi, hi. Are... Hello there, kitchen. And our mint is going strongly. We are now at 900 and... Let it, waiting for it to load. 980, 977 ducks remaining to be minted. And then oh, we'll wow. That, that, that's fast. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, when, when I started minting, it was like uh, 2K left. And it was like uh, less than one week ago. And we all started minting. Like our whole company got at least some kind of uh, ducks for themselves. I saw their... Of all it, so it, it's it's crazy, and we didn't even communicate with each other about uh, your uh, project. I mean, I spoke with Miro about this, but uh, when I uh, got to the founders, they also bought without speaking to us. So I was amazed. So I was told, telling them that uh, we will host you guys next week. So they were pretty excited. So uh, let's start with this. Uh, we have some teams prepared. So. Can you say a little bit uh, how did you guys start it and uh, tell us more about DuxDAO? So for those who don't know, Dux exists in September of last year and it was called the Secret Dux Society. It was run by a completely different team uh, with the leader being MC Duck. And they kind of worked, right? They were building, it was pretty cool. They had a voting site and they basically stopped uh, interacting with the community. That's when I stepped in as a moderator and tried to save the sinking ship. But they, at some point it just left. So we just created a new Discord, made new art based on the old trades, minted new ducks and gave tokens to the holders who got worked so they could claim the new ducks for free. And on the 5th of April, uh, things were done and we started minting. Half, like 3,000 and something, uh, were claimed for free from the old holders. And then we started minting for Solana a few months later. And yeah, the mint has been going on since then. Now, since like two weeks ago, it has been picking up a lot. Because uh, we, um, we appreciate the support from you guys and other projects that have been Minting ducks like crazy. I guess everyone loves ducks. And yeah, from the very beginning, it was all about just keep waddling. We'll make it one way or the other. We have certain plans that like we want to achieve, but we're not going to lie. It's been a, we've been having a hard time having funding because since half of it was given for free and the mint was pretty cheap, and now with our demand... Di um, dynamic minting right we our, our mint prices change from time to time that's exit he he has fun changing the mint from 0 0.69 the 0 0.069 to 0 0.07 0 0.1 whatever he feels like and since we introduced that the mint has been picking up and we're almost done 977 to go still three custom ducks to be minted which is pretty cool and yeah, that's about our origins. Like at the beginning, the former project was all about DAO, right? So they had the beautiful site where you could um, vote. One duck was one vote. But what they didn't add and what we wanted was for holders to be able to put proposals up. So basically they gave us options and we could vote, which was awesome. But it wasn't... Um, developed enough right we really wanted to, for the holders to be able to put up propose, uh, propositions so that they be able so that everyone would be able to vote now that they are gone we have kitchen as a dev but he's been working on our website and on you gonna make it point app and we haven't really come to building the voting site like we wanted to because we really, we put ourselves a huge goal of wanting everything to be automated so from the proposition like no one would have to do anything. No one, no human would have to execute whatever has been voted. So basically the ducks would propose, let's buy, I don't know, five um, youths or whatever. 
And if the quorum was reached, the program in itself would go to Magic Eden and buy the ducks. That way, nor me nor anyone could interfere with what was decided and which, in our opinion, is the true meaning of a DAO, right? A decentralized autonomous organization, like it should be. But to build something like that, I'm sure you are aware since you are trying to do just that, as far as I know, uh, it's pretty hard. You need uh, multiple devs and a lot of funding to be able to keep working on it as like a main work and not on the side like we have been doing because since we have no funding, we do got to eat. So. Yeah, I understand that, friend. So it was a rocky start for the clock world, right? Yes, it was. Yeah, yes. but uh, you managed to pull it off, and I see a lot of traction going on on this project. And uh, can you share a little bit about the platform also? We saw that you guys are doing uh, Web3 jobs, and how this uh, thing is going on. Yes, I'll leave the floor to Kitchen. He's the dev developer behind it. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, YGMI, um, just a, a little background on myself, like I'm, I'm here from the States, um, I've worked remotely for like longer than I can possibly imagine, like I, I don't know what it feels like to step in an office anymore, and um, the, the reason for that was actually a website called uh, weworkremotely.com that I found back a long, long time ago. Uh, I was created by a Google developer, and it was just kind of spread around like a, a Google cafeteria. And that's, that's how they got the word out, and it started to grow. Um, it's a very simple website that just basically presents jobs for people that want to work remotely, and that's it. There's nothing flashy about it. It doesn't have, like, fancy categories. It's just, like, five or six different basic categories. Um, and then the job listings. Um, if you start to look at, like, how much revenue a site like that makes, it's, it's actually millions of dollars, which is – it was shocking when I saw that. So – um, I joined Duckstow under the Secret Duck Society back like in, in uh, last year when they, they first got created. Um, and I had a little bit of a hiatus right around the time that they, they transferred the collection over. Um, so when I came back, I started thinking about ways that I could kind of contribute to the, the team um, in a way that made sense for me and allowed me to kind of work on my interests. And so what I created uh, was a Web3 job platform that actually takes Solana as payment with a Solana Pay integration. So that way, instead of DAOs using fiat to pay for job postings on normal Web2 platforms, they would have a way to be able to just connect their wallet, um, either pay for a job or a featured job spot, um, and then post that to our website. And all of that today is, is kind of automated on the back end, um, except for a single process or two, uh, which we go through checks to make sure that, one, it's not spam that's being created. Um, you know, if you want to give us money to post spam, that's cool. We we won't post it, but we'll we'll gladly take the Solana. Um, but for for every other job, we just kind of want to make sure that like they didn't misspell anything, they didn't use the wrong logo, so we can kind of do quality assurance on this. We've realized over time, like people are actually pretty good at at doing these things, um, and so we're in the process of of kind of coming out of a beta phase now, where our UI is going to have some refreshes and changes. Um, the back end is actually going to be fully automated so that when you post a job, there's no clearance, there's no check, it just goes on our site. Um, and the reason for this is because the, the actual platform itself uh, is set up on a treasury split where every time somebody posts a job, it splits a little bit of the profit off to our DAO so that it fills that treasury up so that the DAO itself gets some use out of the product. Um, and then they promote it on their end just to kind of generate a little bit more revenue for the DAO. So uh, as far as I'm aware... Most projects that work with DAOs today, the way that they work with them is usually by seeding. Um, the DAO will seed them to build something for the DAO, and it's entirely the DAO's product. Um, in Duck's case, they, they have kind of a unique proposition in, in how they offer the ability for developers to join the team and then across leverage the, the community uh, to be able to promote a product that they can then split some of the revenue model off of and into a DAO treasury. So it's kind of like a shared model um, is, is a really interesting way to kind of build. And if you really think about it, like the major problem that people have today when they build products is that they usually can't get the word out about that product very easily. They can't get beta testers. They can't get people to actually test or tell them what the platform's doing that they like or they don't like. Um, and so it, it's really unique to be able to work with a DAO and, and an NFT collection where you have thousands of members that are not only interested in like the success of a platform, but are willing to kind of like spend a little bit of their own free time going through the platform and telling you what 
what might be misspelled or what doesn't look great or what they would change about it. So we've gotten a lot of feedback on that end. Um, so it's, it's some of the more interesting things, you know, obviously we, we have a Solana Pay integration. It's not live right now, but it is built into the platform. Uh, while we're in beta phase, we're actually allowing everyone to post jobs for free. We wanted to kind of encourage people to get used to using the platform and then giving us feedback. So that way we could kind of tool it a little bit before we go live with payments. Um, so we are looking for feedback. Anybody wants to try it out, you're listening, you have a Web3 company, an NFT collection, a DAO. Um, you know, don't don't be afraid to post something in there. It doesn't even have to be a job. Like you could be looking for somebody to help you set up a candy machine CLI um, to generate an NFT collection. We also have a, a section called tasks. And that's more specifically what that's for is for people that aren't companies, but they may need some help learning something or generating a contract, uh, making layers for an NFT collection. So they can find artists, they can find developers, they can find people that can just help walk them through things or even maybe marketing gurus. Um, and so that's the platform that we've built that's out today. It's called YGMI.app. Uh, it stands for you're going to make it. Instead of we're going to make it, we're just kind of making that bold statement that that we're here to work for you. Like we're, we're, we're trying to make sure that you make it in the industry because we're kind of already deeply embedded. Um, the other platform that we're creating today that you actually don't see um, is called Palace UI. Um, and this is something that was kind of born out of a Solana hackathon that occurred uh, back a few months ago. I, I started building it and I'm probably spent like the first week like getting no sleep like four hours a day of sleep and just kind of banging away on this thing um, and what it is it's a, a contest and bounty platform uh, made specifically for Solana NFT collections uh, one of the pain points that we noticed with a lot of NFT collections today was that when they're in discord and they're posting about bounties or they're posting about contests it's one the ui for that is is very clunky it looks just like discord and it gets really easily lost in the fold if you're not constantly checking every discord and checking the announcement channels and in some cases like you, you may have a minor announcement channel and a major announcement channel it's just really easy to miss that stuff so um we kind of missed the end of the hackathon uh actually getting this thing out but Fortunately for us, I, I got a lot of the work <laughs> done on it, and it, it's pretty close to launch. So we're, we're just going to kind of roll through and make it a product. Um, but that'll be coming out pretty soon, and it'll also have a news module. Um, the idea is to allow NFT collections to be able to say, hey, instead of using Discord, um, it, like say in ABC's case, for example, they, they kind of promote themselves as a non-Twitter, non-Discord NFT collection. They're just there for fun. There's no utility. Um, the, the pain point comes when how do you really manage and stay on top of a community like that without really having a discord um, and they still need to have contests. They still need to put out news. They still need to ask questions and, and get help from their community. Um, and we we thought this was kind of a perfect way to do that. So th that you'll probably see here pretty soon. Um, and again, it's called Palace UI. But uh, but yeah, that's what we've been building. Well, thank you, friend, for sharing so amazing story. I mean, definitely stuff to build something, especially this is whole new world. I mean, DAO is rising. This kind of uh, doing things is uh, completely different. And you don't actually have uh, many places to learn about the way of doing. It. And I see most of the teams are doing their own stuff on their own terms. So I think this is great to hear this kind of story. I mean, we was also participating in the... Uh, Solana Hacker House here on Belgrade. Uh, maybe Miroslav can share more information on this. But yeah, I think uh, this is great experience to hear from the first hand uh, how projects are built uh, and everything else. Yeah, yeah. Actually, um, j just a comment on that. Um, w without taking up too much time, I think like on a high level, it's really encouraging to see uh, the all of the like the the resources and the initiatives that Solana is running, like as, as, um, <clears throat> as Marco mentioned, like hacker houses, but then also these like hackathons and summer camp that just passed and all the great projects that, that come from that. And even winners, uh, you, you know, getting like rewards and then being able to further develop their projects and so on. Um, it really like in a way levels out the playing field of, of uh, just people, creating right uh from from all parts of of the world right so we are our, our platform also came from from that right um but actually uh if, if i may ask a question um not to i guess get off uh, topic too much but 
Uh, it sounds like you guys are have some great initiatives. It, it might be interesting for some listeners to hear a bit about your backgrounds. Like, are, have you been in Web3 for a long time? Uh, what, what did you do before this? What kind of led to, to all of these interesting initiatives that you have going on? Yeah, I can go first if you want, man. Um, so I've been in crypto since probably about 2016. I found a product called uh, Steemit, which was a social media platform that allowed you to post content and you could receive a token if you were upvoted on the content that you posted. Um, the only way that you received uh, tokens from people that upvoted you is if they also had tokens in their account. The beauty of this was that it didn't give the tokens that they had to you. It gifted you new tokens from the platform's protocol. Um, and you could choose to either stake those inside of your account and it would make your account more valuable, meaning every time you upvoted somebody's comment or content, it would give them more tokens, basically stating that you're a whale and that you're delegating more uh, weight to this conversation than other conversations. Um, so as a result, I actually made a lot of money off of posting content and writing news articles on Steemit, uh, which gave me a ton of free capital. Um, at the time, I found a couple of centralized exchanges, and I'd never traded crypto before, so I just moved everything over to a centralized exchange, started learning exactly how you trade, um, and it was all on free cash, like stuff that I generated out of nothing. Like I didn't have to really work for it outside of posting content that I probably would have naturally posted on Facebook. Um, so I, I, <laughs> I made a lot of money off of that, and then I got to see the first like really big bear drop um, and, and the cycles that I was involved in. and it kind of washed me out. Like I wasn't interested for a little while. Um, and then I had a friend that he would have his, his phone constantly make this clink sound. And one day I asked him, I said, like, what, what is this clink sound? Like your phone's constantly making. Um, and he explained to me, he was running Litecoin miners and we started talking and he's like, you, you should really get back into it. It's like, he got out of it. It's a good time. Um, and so I started kind of getting back into it really intensely to the point where um, I found a platform that allowed me to set up and script bots and I was doing, uh, I guess what you would call like algorithmic high frequency trading. Um, I ended up taking like a large equity payment from a Web2 SaaS company that I worked at. And I dumped about $70,000 into the market and just started running bots. Um, there was a point in time where my bots were actually making more money than my job was. And so I ended up just leaving. Um, I left a quarter of a million dollar a year job to just do high frequency trading for a living. And I learned very quickly <laughs> that your your income is based on like how the market reacts not like how good your bot is or how good of a trader you are like everyone's beholden to the, the same market and if it goes down unless you're willing to short and do really smart things like you're just going to go down with the market as well so um over the last year probably year and a half i started taking a huge focus on web3 development um, i came from a storage company where i worked with like a ton of fortune 500s um, on building out cloud infrastructure and helping them purchase cloud and all the external products and third-party products that they would need to actually achieve a lot of use cases. And so I took a lot of that information and decided like, hey, I could probably just build my own platforms. Um, so I started learning Web3 authentication. I started understanding Remix and started learning how to, to actually write on Solidity. Um, and I stopped myself at right around November of last year and I found Solana. And when I found Solana, I realized like the transactions were much faster. Uh, the transva transactions per second, I think this morning somebody showed a graph uh, that it was up to like 14,000 for a single block uh, per second, which is just insane. Like the amount of transactions per second that you get on Ethereum, nowhere even come close to that. Um, and then the fees were really cheap. And I'd gone through like a long period of sandwich attacks. I don't know if you know what a sandwich attack is, but basically the amount of time that it takes a block to process on Ethereum allows people to snip out the transactions that have already occurred on that block and then pay more money to essentially put their transaction ahead of yours. So if you're about to invest $10,000 into, say, Mana, and they can see that, what they would do is invest $40,000 into a Mana, and then they would make sure to pay to put your, their transaction ahead of yours, but then they would daisy chain a transaction right after that that essentially close that position at a profit because they knew that you were going to put the 10,000 in. So they just jumped ahead of you. Um, so once I started doing like a lot of wallet analysis, I understood that I was being seen much attacked a lot. And I, I started counting it up and it was like, so well over like 10, $12,000 of just complete loss due to sandwich attacks. So I pretty much gave up right around that time on Ethereum and moved to Solana. 
And uh, since then, I've not looked back. I've, I've honestly, I've loved it. I've never seen more developer engagement in an ecosystem than I do on Solana today. Um, there are a lot of chains that have like little rumblings of that, things like Radix and, you know, you'll you'll see things like uh, Nier and I, I hear Aptos and Sui are both, you know, decent blockchains that are about to start coming out with stuff. But there's just the the mountains of, of dev work that was being done and the amount of like community involvement. Like I could hop into a Discord at three o'clock in the morning and I could talk to 50 developers that are building similar products that have the same pain points and they were all talking to each other. Um, and that, that's kind of like what attracted me to this. Once I found NFTs from that point, it was just over. Like I really haven't traded many coins since. Um, I've gotten more into like the art side of investing. Um, it, it's almost like I don't care what the price is at this point. I just, I, I, it's kind of like for the movement. I want to be able to have enough of these NFTs that, you know, a decade down the road, some of them may be worthless, but there's going to be a few that are like, these are legendary NFTs that if you understood the culture moving forward, you would have been crazy not to like take the opportunity to be involved and, and to own some of these assets. And so that's kind of the direction that I come from is, you know, we could go to zero tomorrow and I just don't care. Like I like building the products. I love the art, you know, it's, it's a community and it's not going to disappear. It may like 50% of it may disappear overnight, you know, due to the pricing, but I, there, there's just too much involvement where people are building stuff for free. Like myself, um, we're not being paid for it. And we don't, we don't really care. We just, we kind of want to build products and we want to kind of make a name in web three. Um, outside of this actually too, as well, like I, I work in web three, I'm a partnerships manager for one of the larger storage por uh, protocols. Um, I won't share their name here because my opinions are kind of my own, but, but yeah, I mean, my, my day job, like right now, I just left on a break really quick to come chat with you guys. But normally I'm talking with people from some of the largest web three protocols and different blockchains, NFT exchanges on a daily basis, just navigating events um you know pretty much everything from how you collaborate on tutorials and content and do software integrations so it, my, my day is pretty much just 100 percent web3 from the time i wake up i get off work i just slide into a discord and continue building so that's incredible man i just have to say just from hearing your story i minted three more ducks extremely bullish i love the pack <laughs> That's the same. <laughs> like, like, your intentions are so they're so um easy to to see and to feel hearing you talk like you were there to to build you're there because you love it you're not there to to make a dollar you're there to help try and improve and enhance your community um and it's also i also i just gotta say here it's so interesting to hear the shift in your perspective when it comes to investing it's gone from purely like scientific and mathematical driven uh, and stats and data and all that stuff now to purely art. And it's gone from the completely objective now to completely subjective. And I think that's just so cool, man. It just, I would imagine that completely changes your experience when it comes to investing. And uh, cool. yeah, that's just really cool. Yeah, I mean, like thinking in terms of like, we, we were actually making a joke about this last night, um, not in Ducks <laughs> Discord, but uh, Critter, Critters Cult, they they have a project called Sticks that is, it's just a stick. It's literally just like a, a multitude of pixels that form a stick with some eyes on it. It's it's the equivalent of Ethereum's rock NFT. Um, so nobody should invest in this thing. It has no value. It has no utility. It's, it's literally just a joke. Um, but right now, they're, they're ahead of some of the largest Web3 games in terms of market cap and floor price and volume. Um, we were just talking about this last night and they're like, you know, a VC backed, you know, multi-million dollar gaming startup headed by ex Goldman Sachs, Riot Games, head of the monetization league of legends, dude, can't do what memes are doing right now. And so I think there's, there's just a lot of value behind art and imagery and feeling, and you can't really buy that stuff. You can't build it from a company. It, it kind of comes with just like humility, I think <laughs> like a little bit of like loss and then realizing that it's all just it's all just play tokens at the end of the day, like none of it really amounts to anything except for like the the experiences that you get out of it at the end. So that's cool that you picked up on that. Awesome, Absolutely. man! Thanks, thanks for sharing this wonderful story. I mean, definitely we all went from one end to another, changing things, approaches, talking to the audience, talking to the community. And it's kind of fun, actually. Uh, I really enjoy this process, and I think that every Web3 project is going through the similar 
that. So, uh, Moon Bubbles, can you share a little bit your background? So we want to hear your, your sure. side of the story. So my story is a bit different, but I'll start with it. Like, so I joined um, crypto in December 2020. Basically, some friends of mine spent um, a whole night until 4 a.m. explaining to me how they were providing liquidity on Uniswap and dumping about uh, five Ethereum a day of, um, of the token they got, right, from providing liquidity. And I got hooked. So I started investing money, started trading derivatives. I loved it. The adrenaline is amazing. I still love it. It's even better when you don't lose money. But even if you only lose money, it's pretty cool. And so I spent months watching the charts, like from morning until evening, I was watching the charts and I even made a lot of money, then lost all, everything again. You know how it goes, derivatives traders, they always lose at the end. Until I met uh, some people on Discord, it was, this was around the time um, of COPE, when COPE was starting. And that one guy was just always saying the same thing, believers win, right? So at the beginning, I was like, yeah, that's how you become a bag holder, right? But um, believers do win. I started finding projects that I really believed in. I really loved, like DJ Apes. I'm a huge fan of DJ Apes and other projects. So I started to look for projects I believe in. And the community is always a big, um, it's a big part of it, right? Like um, the project can be cool if the community doesn't, isn't in, how do you call it? Um, no, I'll try to call it. How would you say it? If you aren't, if you don't, Pay attention to your community, right? If you don't treat them right, if you aren't um, helpful, nice, welcoming, and if you don't respect them, it will never work out, no matter how good your project is. And that's something I figured out and tried to implement to Ducks, right? Why um, even more so during the bull market? Teams who didn't have the time nor the means to be um, welcoming and helpful to every member, right? So that's what where I come in. I try to be helpful, welcoming to everyone. And it really shows like good vibes are um, good vibes are very contagious. So it reflects on the community. The way the whole the founders or the mods behave themselves really mirrors itself into how the community community treats um, with each other. And yeah, I think Ducks is a very good example of this. We aren't quite too many, but we are very strong. A bunch. We know each other. We are active every day. Same guys. We love losing money all together. We even love we love more making money together. But that's rare, right? In these tiring times. But we're doing quite well. And now with the mint going on, it's pretty good. But yeah, I'm a long-term investor, and what Exit would call a backholder. But it's been working out for me. So. Oh, and on professional side, I just finished my master in law. I'm actually, I started to study to be a lawyer, but I really hate, hate the idea of sitting behind the desk every day. So I'm really trying to find my way and my place in Web3 and maybe not having to work as a lawyer would be like my dream goal at the moment. Huge congratulations to you, man. That's a man that cannot be understated, the amount of work that you put into uh, to accomplish that. And it's it's very interesting, actually. That's a theme I get a lot from uh, collaborating with different communities, and speaking with different uh, people who have different roles in different projects. The the uh, goal to get away from the grind, from the nine to five, and be able to have the freedom that is included in working on M3 is such an awesome goal. And I wish it for everyone um, to be able to do that full time. It just sounds like the best possible case scenario and just adds so much to the quality of life. So I, uh, yeah, I'm sending you all the best wishes and, and, and hoping you accomplish that. It sounds like you're well on your way, my friend. Yeah, I've been quite lucky with the project I believed in. And just to, to, um, to give a precision, like I'm not expecting to get paid for ducks. Like no one is getting paid for now. Obviously I have a huge amount of ducks because I really believe in the project and I do love the ducks even more so the one I got today. But um, yeah, if we hold ducks and ducks succeed, we all win, right? There's no need to like, obviously, I would love to be able to pay kitchen to be pay our artists and the other devs we have because they're all doing amazing work and the dedication they put in, it's astonishing. But since we don't have funds and our holders come first and we are all holders, so working towards um, rewarding our holders is working for ourselves as well. 
So my hope is that I'll be able to live off my investments beside ducks and just keep doing ducks for the holders and keep going, waddling forward every day. And I'm pretty sure we'll make it one day. I love it, man. Uh, if you guys can just excuse me for two seconds, I'm just going to take a quick step away and mint a couple of more ducks here. <laughs> just kidding. Oh, no, I'm not kidding. I will. I'm not going to leave. I'm going to stay here, but I'm going to mint a few more ducks. That was also awesome. Don't also, worry. if anyone is interested in minting, I've linked, uh, I posted the link at the top of the space here. So just click on that thread and the link is uh, right on the top in that post there. So go feel free to check it out. I, yeah, I do have some questions about Unique as well if you, if you guys have time. Sure, man. So I, I, I haven't done my due diligence to kind of dig through the documentation. Like I've, we've played with the platform. We think it's really, really, really cool. Um, it's an, obviously an idea that we had, we had to try to kind of integrate into our, our collection a little bit. Um, is there, are there plans, or this may already be built into your docs, but if it's not, uh, definitely tell me. Um, are there any SDKs or APIs that you guys are in the process of building or have built that would allow a collection like ours to essentially bring the power of Unique VC directly into um, a, like a self-built application where we're leveraging your protocol or what you're building in a way that you can still monetize it or benefit from it, but we can kind of create a best focus experience for our users? Yeah. I, I can maybe jump in and answer that. Um, so the, the short answer is we're not there yet, um, but but that would certainly be like some some form of end goal, right? Um, so so right now, I just just for a bit of context, like we're we're still fairly early in um, building our platform. Um, we've been on mainnet for I would say just around two months now. Uh, <clears throat> we we do have like a a fairly ambitious roadmap um, of things to come. Uh, so basically we're in this like V1 um, of our platform. Uh, there are like, I would say certainly till end of this year, we, we have kind of like a clear idea of the, the different, you know, integrations, partnerships that we have in mind and working on um, developments as well. Uh, but to answer your question and, and not take up any much more of your time uh, or anyone's time, rather, um, we we don't have that available at this very moment. But that 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 certainly makes sense. Awesome, thank you. Okay, I have one question. So, why ducks? And can you tell us a story behind the ducks and uh, tell us about the, the art? I really love the art, man. It's uh, it's vibing. I don't know how to say it, but it it, it clear, clearly resonated with me right away. When I saw ducks, I wanted to to have at least a couple of them, but I ended up like having sixteen of them right away. So with the art, why ducks? So basically, we really liked the project, right? We got worked all together, like me, accident kitchen. We were in the old project. We all got worked. We took the loss. And we decided we could like save the community, right? And then we had um, a competition with like the what holders and we were like, yeah, let's show us what you can do. Like, is there, um, do your own version, your new version or better version of the old ducks, right? And then we had DJ and Bald Boy really doing a great job. He just showed up with a pond, a pond right? With like a little lake and a whole house and the art was amazing. And we reached out and we were like, yeah, What's it gonna take for you to make like to redo the trades and we'll gen generate new NFTs for everyone? And after talking a lot, um, he was a uh, he was a big fan of Digin Apes as well. So I f I offered him a Digin Ape to redo the trades. He accepted, and the rest is history. We are lucky to have such a talented guy working on our docs. The only thing I'm a little bit frustrated because I love the doc art as well. But I do find that the customs are way too good compared to your average dog. So I'm really been thinking, um, been like thinking, but like in the future, next year probably, if we won't be doing some kind of rework or retweaking of the dog art, but that's like far away down the road. But yeah, in all in all, we were very lucky. It's like. The whole project goes not by instinct, but whatever is going to happen will happen, right? So we just keep waddling and good vibes since they are contagious and we 
we are like waddling along and gathering more and more people until we will become this unstoppable group of ducks just waddling in the same direction and no one will be able to stop us, right? And we are pulling and finding new artists, new devs, new talented people every day that are joining us. And how can we fail if we all work together and build together? We don't have one clear leader. We are a community of leaders and builders and artists and all of it. Yeah, actually, there's something really powerful about, and and maybe there's a, a bunch of people here who've been a part of that, like being a part of a community that's been rugged and then actually doing something about it, right? Um, so so actually, this, this is like um, now... Like, I don't, I don't know which time of, like, I've, I've heard many times or just a couple of times where people are building communities out of already rugged communities, right? And it essentially, from my perspective, like, it weeds out the, the bad seeds, let's say, right? Like, it really brings the, the, the enthusiasts together, the people who, exactly what you said, like, want to create this unstoppable movement and will keep going regardless of obstacle, right? Um, if, if that means even like creating an entirely new collection and design of duck and so on, um, that's, that's really great to hear. I think that's like a, a powerful uh, part about your story, right? Yes, we'll, we'll just keep waddling. I, I really like, I love the community we have until now. We have been growing quite steadily. Obviously, during summer, it was we're very quiet, not a lot of people around because people are enjoying holidays and going to vacation and stuff. But all in all, I think we're doing we're doing amazing. The mint is going on strong. After we mint, we've been also being able to increase our treasury to uh, buying and selling of NFTs. We have Exit, who is kind of an expert trader, so to speak, or thinks he is anyways. And it's been going quite well. We have now over 220 Solana in our treasury. And soon, I hope, we'll be able to pay our devs and artists what uh, what they deserve, right? And that way, we'll be able to move at a whole different speed, faster, and do even more than what we've been doing now. Yeah, man. Thanks for sharing this information. So uh, I want to know what makes uh, one collection or project so special when it comes to the ducks. So uh, let's say you started the, the, as a Rocky, uh, you started Rocky, so now things are moving forward, you are developing the community. I saw a lot of traction going on, especially I saw that when Miroslav posted on his Twitter profile, hey ducks, uh, just uh, wanted to hang out with you and follow each other. And there was like, 20 people right away jumping in and saying hi, uh, uh, publishing their own ducks. And it was like amazing to see in like five minutes getting so much traction. So uh, let's talk about the community building, uh, how to push uh, NFT collection and things like that. So yeah, what I've written down a few points that we think are important or basically I think are important. So uh, first of all, it's like just be legit, right? We have every day we have people reaching out. They want us to, um, they want to retweet us, right? To give us followers for zero five Solana. Every single day we have influencers wanting to promote us, and we just respectfully decline the offer, right? Because we don't want that. We have an organic growth. We only want people who want to be here. We don't want to. You don't want people that only here for financial gain. Obviously, we expect that at some point we will be making financial gains and that the DAX price will rise and that we will be uh, be able to generate revenue. But that's not the main goal, right? We want to waddle together. We want to invest together. We want to find alpha together. We just want to spend a great time because while we are doing the crypto thing, right, we are all active. We are all on Discord anyway. So why not have fun while doing it? And then um, another point is like, be honest, don't over promise, um, over, um, yeah, over promise, right? Uh, we never said like, uh, we did have a fair share of over promising as well, but we are really trying to keep it as honest as possible. Uh, the docs know that we don't have much funding, that we have kitchen working for free, that um, things are being worked on, but like at a smaller, at a small pace, right? And um 
persever perseverance is key. Like we won't give up. That's the only thing we've promised from day one. No matter what, we'll keep working forward. And we have a lot of community members that like just agree to that and they are um, voluntarily helping, even with the weight, like as you mentioned, that um, when you tweeted about the dogs, they all came and tweeted their own dogs and welcomed you into the community. That's basically holders do it by themselves. We are not even, even though Exit tends to kind of motivate them and do weight competitions, most of it comes from voluntary basis. They do it because they like the dogs, they like the community, they like being helpful for each other. We really try to stick around for each other and yeah, it's been working quite well. And again, good vibes are contagious. If the mods are, are, um, are always um, are you, yeah, expanding good vibes, I guess, not really the right word, but they are contagious and it will mirror back. If you treat people with respect, they'll treat you back with respect. So it's all a question of treating them right, having the good vibes, pooling resources, having fun together. And yeah, the rest comes alone. Well, thanks for sharing all this information with us. And uh, we are coming close to our end uh, with this uh, space call. Uh, before we leave, I want to hear your short steps and what are you planning to do and uh, share some insider information from your end. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, maybe, and maybe some questions uh, at the end for the audience as well. Yeah, we can take some questions for the audience as well after, after this question. So yeah, I can go over the immediate short-term goals that we have. So basically, minting out, right? That's like the first um, mission we have. Then we resumed our weekly art competition. I don't know if you had time to check that out. Basically, every week we do some kind of, not really a collaboration, but we do a weekly art competition where the team is ducks and another project. And we use the other project, we'll buy three or four NFTs that serve as prizes along with ducks. And we give them out to like the best art that was made by our duck holders. Because we have many artists and they quite love our competitions because not only get, they get a lot of ducks, but they get some meaningful prizes as well. Like the, there was one with trash pandas and with uh, soul slugs. And this week it's with Skull Club Dao which is a pretty cool project and you should definitely check out. And then after the art competition, we do have a duck degen pool, which was the reason why we tried your site in the first place. It's been struggling a bit to get launched because many people are on the round all, all the day, every time. So there are, there isn't, we shouldn't, yeah, we're still figuring out how that's going to work because a lot of people are around at different times. So it's hard for them to degen together. And finally, on a midtermish objective, it's the like our website being built by Kitchen as we speak. So you see, K Kitchen has a lot going on for Ducks. He's building three websites at the same time. I don't know how he does it, to be honest. But yeah, that's for short-term plans. And regarding some secret alpha, I rather not say there is <laughs> the possibility of something huge being in the works but like we don't want to be like the other projects saying stuff that won't happen so we rather say nothing and wait until it's confirmed under promise over delivery that's, that's exactly awesome. actually okay, noticed guys. something really funny right before i hopped on this call um i was trying to pull it back up real quick so i could show you guys uh, I don't know if you caught the Magic Eden drama with uh, Hyperspace yesterday on Twitter. Did you guys all see this? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. I'm blocking yeah. YouTube. I, I yeah, so this morning, uh, Salon Art makes a post on Twitter that says, DDoS this and DDoS that, but has anyone said good morning today? And it's hilarious because Soul C says good morning, good morning, like first. It's like these two exchanges that have gotten like a lack of attention lately and have honest, good intentions, kind of just trying to form engagement because they're like, hey, look at us. Like, you could totally use us if you hate these guys. And it's just, it's just so interesting to see two companies that are in the same boat kind of really networking together on Twitter. Yeah. And also interesting to see how how quickly these things develop, right? Like in a matter of 
a day or so, like things can really turn around. I'm I'm a huge fan of Solana. Obviously, not because of the bold badges, because it was kind of a work. But the new site, I liked it quite a lot. But have you seen the new improved bold badger art, or what's gonna be what's gonna go replace the bold badger art? They made a preview of it today. I'm just gonna say it's not what I expected. Really, not what I expected. But I'll let you decide for yourself. Very intriguing. Now I'm going to have to get caught up to date. This is news to me all around the board. <laughs> gave me some, gave me a new rabbit hole to, to fall into. Appreciate that. Okay, guys. Uh, maybe we can take some questions from the audience. Uh, is everyone interested to ask a question or jump in the conversation? Feel free to request uh, the access. Let's give them a minute or two for that. You can chat, of course. So it doesn't seem to be any questions. Uh, yeah, for now. Is there anything else you guys wanted to talk about? Maybe some other questions you had in store for us? So after the minting phase, uh, what are the plans uh, for the project? So once we are done minting, then we'll be able to actually see, um, because we have a very low amount of listed docs. We have 210 listed docs on the marketplace with uh, over, um, yeah, over 5,000 docs minted. So that's quite, that's not, an, that's not a lot at all. And the floor has been holding steady at zero one, right? We do have a tendency of sweeping ducks to give away for the art competition, and we keep doing that. But I expect that to be um, kind of—I don't like the word. I don't want. I don't like saying supply crush, but it's basically what it's going to be. And um, since the supply is so little, it's going to be interesting to see how the price—if it's going to pump, if it's not going to pump. But either way, we don't really care because we are not going to let any price decide on keeping going or not. We are going to keep Waddle either way. And we are really excited about future collab collabs that might be coming up or might not be coming up. And our website. I, for one, am really excited for the website, which might take longer than expected because Kitchen's been working on the other ones as well. But it will come at some point. So stick around and waddle, waddle along and find out. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> I, I, I build front ends at work and then do do all the partnership stuff. And then I get off work and I'm working on like three platforms at the same time as trying to trade and stay active in all the community. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely an undertaking. I could we, probably uh, prioritize like one thing more. We are very it, it would be awesome to, to, to invite and... more devs. We are very lucky to have you and very thankful for your work. It's not going unnoticed. Oh, and also another thing that I launched to just in my free time during the hackathon, because I, I had a hard time finding it. And I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of applications that get built that it make it's really easy to do this. Uh, but just authentication for token gating on Solana in a simple way um, is it's, it's not achievable. <laughs> like if you look everywhere, there's companies telling you that they're about to bring tokens uh, getting to Solana. There are smart contracts that you or programs that you can get from companies like Third Web or like Alchemy, I believe, that do the token gating. But that means that you have to build a like React application. You have to build some kind of application that has an in, uh, like an environment variable that you can work with. Um, it, it, not so much with just plain JavaScript. And so I built a plain JavaScript token gating. A uh, piece of code that you can just drop the JavaScript onto any page. You can pick the token, um, like the NFT collection symbol, and it will gate for that symbol. So, for in our case, it's Ducks. Um, anytime you know it, you connect with Phantom to a website, it'll just check the wallet. It'll look for the NFT to to have a symbol of Ducks, and if true, then it just displays the page. If it doesn't, then it just blocks or restricts the page. So it's just a really simple token gating code snippet. Um, but if you guys ever run into that, like definitely hit us up. Really cool, man. I uh, I do not have any kind of background in development at all, 
but uh, hearing about all the things that you're building and just it seems like the ease at which you do build them and just pump out these awesome sounding ideas is definitely pretty inspiring, I got to say. Well, thank you. Awesome, well, man. Please. Yeah. I don't see any requests from the audience. Uh, last chance to ask the questions. So if you want to raise your hand, just request and I will give you uh, the access to this talk. So feel free to jump in whenever you feel the time is right. Okay, well, no questions for now. Uh, maybe if you have questions but you're scared to jump in, you can always jump on our Discord or the Zao Discord and ask any question you want to learn more about uh, both projects. So uh, thank you guys for jumping in and taking time to speak uh, with us. And it was an uh, awesome space call, I need to say that. And I really enjoyed uh, uh, all those uh, tips and tricks, uh, all those information about the projects and uh, the path you took that uh, gets you so far. So thank you so much, guys. And uh, Can you just maybe give me a second? I think I am anti-life, wants to talk, but doesn't find the request button. But that might also be a tool because he is, he is known to be a funny guy. So if you can just okay. give him the microphone and see if he's... What's his he... nickname? I am anti-life. He can't find the button. Probably I just invited him. I got him. Okay, okay, perfect. Come on up, my friend. What have you got to say? Don't tell me he's on... No, he has to be on the phone, right? It doesn't work on a computer. It, yeah, it no, has you to need be... to draw him from your phone. In my sense, from our end. Very ominous name. Yeah. He doesn't seem to be able to find a button. <laughs> I guess I'll, I'll be making fun of with him about it. <laughs> well, never mind then. It won't open, he says. Well, next time then. Well, either way... Yeah, yeah. sometimes Twitter uh, bugs. Uh, last time I couldn't even hear, like, uh, every third word. It was crazy, but it happens, you know. Yeah. Either way, very glad to meet you guys and very interested in your project. We'll be definitely be checking out when updates come. And we are happy to stay in connection and maybe have some call-up down the line. Definitely. Thanks a lot, guys. Oh, I, think I, I have, found the I'm button in. now. Ah, there you I go. Actually, I actually have a question. Welcome, friend. I have a question for the doc. Shoot. Like, sure, sure. When is the staking going to be active and what is going to be the reward for it? So we were talking about it in Discord earlier. So, there is no official... Now I'm 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 really weighing my words here. There is no official staking announcement planned for now. There has been talk of staking that it won't be for some Ponzi coin. We don't want to make a coin for the sake of it because we think that's useless and only leads to speculation. And even though it props up, it prop up, it props up our value in the long term. I don't think it's sustainable. So. Yeah, I can't say more for the moment, sadly. Okay. I think you're coming about it from, I think you're coming about that from the right direction. It's definitely something that uh, can, can make or break a community as well. So a cautious approach definitely seems like it's the most beneficial for a project all around. I mean, if we would use a token, it would be Zolana, right? It's the perfect token, very liquid, no problem whatsoever. Why wouldn't we use Solana? No, that makes a ton of sense, man. I'm looking forward to if there are any developments. But hey, either way, we'll be following you. I'm really excited to follow your progress. I'm really excited to now be a part of your community as well. 
We are very glad to have you and welcome. Quack, quack, right? Quack, quack, quack. quack, quack. <laughs> Great talking to you guys. Yeah. Great talking uh, to you guys. Uh, thank you one more time. And uh, we will be following you closely. And probably, if I can, I will mint more ducks. So I invite you all the audience here to... Um, take uh, their time and uh, to press that uh, mint button as uh, many times as possible. Also, don't forget to check their platform for the web jobs and uh, don't forget to create or join the club on Unique uh, VC. So, link is uh, in the bio on the bro profiles uh, and uh, talk we to you soon next week. We definitely recommend trying the Unique VC. It's very professionally made, even though it still has some tweaks to be uh, upgraded we really loved it and it's very straightforward with that being said yeah. yeah man we are talking with our community as well uh, especially because DAO is uh, different for everyone some communities want uh, one kind of uh, features another communities want something different and we are trying to implement everything uh, that is uh, kind of useful for both communities for the smaller ones or the bigger ones so for example smaller ones uh, if you are investing with friends you know you have one kind of needs if you're investing as a company or uh, venture capital you have completely different needs and organizational structures so uh, yeah I mean a lot of features are in the pipeline and we are trying to make the best out of everything and to be uh, just there for the community and uh, be, being useful in general Okay, folks, thank you so much, and talk to you next week. Uh, we are having these spaces uh, every week, so follow us on Twitter and learn more about the next uh, space call. So, bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you around. Quack, quack, quack. quack. <laughs> Thanks so much, bye -bye. everyone. Pleasure as always. Thank quack, you. quack. Quack, quack. <laughs>